everybody. Um, I will be making a vlog today. Um, it will be about the vlogging genocide. Um, this video is for people who are looking to learn more about the Bosnian genocide, or even if you don't know anything at all about the Bosnian genocide, um, I will tell you what happened. And some of the things I'll actually be going over are what happened, uh, how all of the events relate to the 10 stages of genocide. And I will also go through like how we could prevent something like this from happening again. All right, so let's get right into it. It began on April or in April of 1992 and it ended somewhere in the year of 1995 and it happened in places all over Yugoslavia and uh, through these years in the 90s the Bosniaks they were uh, they were nicknamed the Bosniaks uh, the Bosnian Muslims and Croatian people had atrocious things done to them this was after the Bosnian Herzegovina Republic declared its independence a uh, hundred thousand victims died 80% were Bosniaks, the remaining 20 were Croat civilians. When Yugoslavian leader Josip Broz Tito died in 1980, the growing nationalism of Yugoslav states of Croatia, Slovenia, Serbia, Bosnia, Macedonia, and Montenegro were threatening to tear apart Yugoslavia. And then the Serbian leader Slobodan Milosevic made matters worse by creating discontent between both the Serbs and the Croats, Bosnians, and uh, Albanian neighbors. And come 1991, Slovenia, Croatia, and Macedonia all declared their independence, and there ended up being a war fought in Croatia in 1991. Right, so um, at this point, there is now the 10 stages that I will go through. And the very first stage is classification. And here for classification, the border played the biggest role. Um, classification is basically when you split up the um, groups and you have us and them, and you're basically dividing the people. And the border played the biggest role because what happened was is the border was anybody on the other side of the border was an enemy and anybody on our side was good. Basically the Bosnian Serbs and the Bosnian Muslims and Croatians civilians were all divided. And now for stage two. This is symbolism. Uh, when names and or symbols are given to help any one side to distinguish between the two, the Bosnian Muslims, who were the victims, were given the name the Bosniaks, as I had mentioned earlier. And this was just to um, put a little piece of symbolism on their heads uh, and in other people's mouths to kind of uh, already create more separation than just the border. And here in stage three, discrimination. This takes place when a dominant group makes laws or uses political power to deny the rights of the other group. This took place when the Bosniaks were forcefully made to leave their area by means of either rape, murder, or torture, all disgustingly brutal uh, things to have happened to anybody. And now for stage four, which is dehumanization. Ethnic cleansing was a way of dehumanizing the Bosniaks. Many people were driven out of the Bosnian Muslim-filled towns by means of mostly murder. Stage 5, which is organization, yes. This genocide was brought upon and organized by the Bosnian Serb forces with the backing of the Serb-dominated Yugoslav army. And Slobodan Milosevic, the president of Serbia at the time, they were all... Um, organizing these types of attacks and uh, brutal like hopping from town to town and uh, killing all these Bosniaks and now for stage six which is polarization both polarization and propaganda were shown during the Bosnian genocide Bosnian Muslims were portrayed as evil in the media the general public got the idea that the Bosnian Muslims were coming to destroy them but in fact, it was quite the other way around. Now for stage seven, preparation. The whole event of the genocide needed preparation. The ethnic cleansing part and purification were the most calculated and prepared parts of the whole thing. The traveling and expelments of Bosniaks were also very intricate details. As for number eight, persecution. The Bosnians were discriminated against. 
They were removed from many regions. Women and girls were picked up and placed in camps and repeatedly raped. But on the other hand, boys were shot and killed on the spot instead. Stage 9. Extermination. The Bosnian Genocide was the mass murdering of some 100,000 people, which was 80% Bosniak. Extermination included deaths in camps. The causes were induced by uh, living conditions, starvation, and disease. And finally, for the tenth and final stage, um, this stage never fails to show up in any genocide. It is always prominent. Uh, and this would be the final stage, denial. This means that you pretend it never happened. So if you committed this genocide, you would pretend, hey, I didn't do anything. Nothing actually went wrong. The enemies try to show that somehow it is the victim's fault that all this happened. Many Bosnian Serbs denied having done anything. The perpetrators ended up digging up mass graves, burnt bodies, and found other ways to cover up the evidence of what they had done. In 2002, Slobodan Milosevic, who was the Serbian leader, was charged and convicted of several counts of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. And uh, quite recently, actually, not too many years ago, uh, the Bosnian Serb leader was charged and convicted of the same things. The Bosnian Serb leader was given 40 years in jail only. I honestly think that is too little for having, uh, for being responsible for the deaths of 8,000 Bosnian Serbs or Bosniaks. Uh, this, like him being sentenced and charged and tried, uh, was in many ways linked to the Nuremberg trials of former Nazi leaders as well. And that is all of the 10 stages. And just to recap, we have the first stage, which is classification, symbolism, discrimination, dehumanization, organization, polarization, preparation, persecution, extermination, and denial. And uh, for now, how can uh, we prevent these things from happening? First, when somebody says, or a country reaches out for help, uh, we have to believe them. We can't just brush it aside and say, oh yeah, it's no big deal. Um, nobody has actually been killed yet. We actually have to believe them first. We, we have to back them, give them support. Um, uh, as, a, as a citizen, I don't know if I'd be able to. But I would uh, try and get this message out that some a country out there needs help. And hopefully we get to the government and the government would find a way to uh, do something about it. And then we'd actually have to do something about it. We can't just recognize it and believe them. We have to act on um, what we think is right. And I, I believe that this could have been prevented, uh, actually. There was a lot of um, anticipation for many years before this uh, actually happened and there was any, ac any actual um, action taken. So uh, somebody could have clearly done something about it and tried to step in and help, but there wasn't much of that being done. People just didn't take it seriously. They thought it was just, oh, no big deal, just a civil war. But civil wars do happen, and as much as I want to say that other countries shouldn't get involved. I, I don't think, I think it could turn into a lot more than just a civil war if other countries were to get involved. But since it, it clearly wasn't just a civil war, there was also a genocide that happened. Uh, you can't, you can't ignore things like that. Anyways, uh, thank you for listening. And I hope to get, uh, to see you guys sometime soon. Peace.